I've been using the Dell XPS 15 2 one for the last two weeks as my daily driver, putting it through its paces, running the benchmarks, running all the tests, and I've come to a conclusion about it. Hey everybody, this is Andrew, and this is my review of the Dell XPS 15 2 in one Let's find out if it's worth your money. If you haven't done so, check out my unboxing and first impressions video of the XPS 15 2-in-1. I give a general tour of the device and I cover a lot of things I won't cover in this video. So if you haven't done so, check it out. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I have a lot of very exciting things on the way to the studio. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. It runs Windows 10 Home, but if you want to upgrade it to Windows 10 Pro without paying full retail price, Check out our sponsor for today's video, scdkey.com. Head on over there, the official platform for selling Microsoft Windows keys, Game keys, Steam CD keys, Origin CD keys, Uplay CD keys, PC Game CD keys, PlayStation Network prepaid cards, and Xbox prepaid cards as well. If you select the Windows 10 Pro OEM CD key, it's only $14, but with my 10% discount code, as you see here, it goes down to $12.60. That's just insane for a Windows 10 Pro license. That's great. Now, when you go to checkout, you have the option to pay with PayPal, with Mint, and the major credit cards. It's that simple. So head on over to scdkey.com and put in my 10% discount code for some great savings. Now the unit I'm reviewing is the first unit I've ever tested with the KB Lake G processor. It's the Intel Core i7-8705G. It's got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and my unit has 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. And it has the Radeon RX Vega MGL graphics with four gigabytes of graphics memory. And I was very curious to see how performance would be with the KB Lake G and that graphics processor. And as you can see from the Geekbench 4 results, it did well. And here's how it did against its competition. As you can see, it certainly held its own, actually beating out a lot of its competition in many of these benchmarks. Check it out. These results are impressive for a system that doesn't have discrete graphics. It tends to match up with or beat thicker machines that have the NVIDIA GeForce 1050 inside. That's pretty good. Playing games such as GTA 5, you're going to get around 60 frames per second in its highest setting, which is not that bad. It's actually very playable. Playing games such as Rise of the Tomb Raider did okay with low settings at 73 frames per second, medium 55 frames per second, and high settings 46 frames per second, which is certainly playable. Now Dell claims that its heating system is what helps deliver this great performance and with dual fans, extremely thin heat pumps and thermal insulation. But in practice, it's still got a bit warm. After streaming about 15 minutes of an HD video from YouTube, it measured about 85 degrees Fahrenheit on the touchpad, 93 and a half degrees between the G and H keys and a warm 96.5 degrees on the bottom. That last measurement is higher than the 95 degree comfort threshold. Without a doubt, one of the best features of this device is its gorgeous display. It's simply stunning. It has a 15.6 inch 4K UHD display with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. That's 282 pixels per inch and it has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And it has an awesome 160% of the sRGB color gamut, beating everything in its path including the premium laptop average of 111%, Lenovo Yoga 720, the MacBook Pro, and of course the Surface Book 2. And at 400 nits, it's actually very bright, but it's not the brightest when you compare it to some of its competition. That goes to the MacBook Pro, followed by a close second with the Surface Book 2. But overall, it's pretty bright. The blacks are very deep, it has very vibrant colors, and I have to say, this is one of the best screens I've ever seen on a laptop. It's that good. And of course, it's an infinity edge display with those extremely thin bezels. You gotta love it. And because of those thin bezels, they had to put the webcam on the bottom, near the keyboard, below the display, and that's not the ideal situation, causing to have a very unflattering up-your-nose angle. 
but the problem is somewhat remedied if you put it in tent mode, then you can have it in a normal position. Not the most ideal situation, there's something they need to address in the future iterations, they still haven't done so, and that's a bit disappointing. And for an additional $99, you can get the Dell Premium Active Pen with 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. I thought it worked well. Pressure sensitivity was really spot on. Palm rejection worked well, and it has support for the tilt function. I thought the pen worked really well, very responsive, very little latency, overall very good responsiveness. The power button doubles as a fingerprint sensor, working well, registering my finger every time I used it. Great for logging in with Windows Hello. And I'm happy to report that it has two USB Thunderbolt 3 ports that supports four lanes. That means you can connect an external GPU to get some extra graphics horsepower. That's pretty good. You get a micro SD card slot, not a full size SD card slot, which is a bit disappointing considering this is still a 15 inch device. And I love the battery indicator light, letting you know how much juice you have left without having to turn on the laptop. You also get two more USB-C ports on the right side of the device. They're not Thunderbolt 3, but you can do data charge and display out. And of course you have your 3.5 millimeter headset jack, worked well, there was no static or interference. Dell calls this keyboard the maglev keyboard or short for magnetic levitation. The short version is that it reduces the thickness of the keyboard but uses magnets and a metal plate to create resistance. I was skeptical when I first saw it at CES in 2018 back in January, but I'll tell you what, it really works. If you're going to make a low travel keyboard, this is how you do it. The maglev keyboard of the XPS 15 Tunon has just 0.06 millimeters of key travel and only 71 grams of actuation. That's the amount of force required for a key press. Us. Though the measurements are usually a recipe for disaster, I'm convinced this is the future of low travel keyboards. This is pretty good. And I really love the touchpad. It's precision drivers that I love and it has no issues responding to Windows 10 gestures and you can do your two finger scrolling without any issues. It was a pleasure. The speakers on the XPS 15 Tunron are located on the bottom of the device. They're nice and loud, and they easily fill the small room without any issues, although the bass was a little bit lacking. But overall, I thought it was pretty good. And now for the bad news, the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 75 watt hour battery lasted just a little bit over 6.5 hours, well below the category average. That's not great. Now you can access the inside of the device if you remove the bottom plate. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but you can do it. And you can replace the SSD drive. Now it's a PCIe NVMe style SSD, and it actually was okay. Here's some of the results from the Crystal Dismark test. The Dell XPS 15 Tune One has a lot going for it. It's KB Lake G performance and the AMD Radeon graphics are strong. The 4K display is simply stunning and I really like the Maglev keyboard. Now Dell has come up with an incredible solution for making low travel keyboards usable. But still, Dell hasn't been able to fix the webcam placement on its XPS line, which really is just an annoyance at this point. And the battery life is less than 7 hours, which is far below the category average, and that defeats the purpose of making this so portable in the first place. But if you need incredible performance in a thin 2-in-1, the Dell XPS 15 is a very strong choice. It won't be the laptop you'll travel with unless you lug the charger around. But if the screen is what you prize the most, you won't be getting anything like the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 and the performance is excellent for such a thin laptop. But with that, you'll have to make some compromises. So what do you think about the Dell XPS 2-in-1? I like a lot of aspects of this 2-in-1 convertible. I love its gorgeous 4K UHD display. It's simply stunning. It's really gorgeous, really sharp, very high-end. Really hit a home run as far as I'm concerned with that display. As far as performance, I love the KB Lake G. I thought it performed well. I thought its graphics processor really performed well, as you saw by the benchmarks and the gaming performance that I demonstrated in this video. 
But there are some things I don't like about this device. Obviously, the battery life is below average. I think they can do better. I don't know whether it be software updates or through some hardware improvements in the next iteration. But battery life has certainly been below average. It's not terrible, but it's certainly not good. And those are some of the things you'd want to keep in mind, especially with convertible. But I did love its pen. I thought the Dell Active Pen with its 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, great for note taking, great for the digital artists who want to sketch out some drawings. This certainly can get the job done. I thought the overall good performance of this device, the nice looks, I'm not crazy, as you know, about the placement of the webcam. That's still something that plagues Dell XPS line to this day. I, they did move it to the center, so when you put it in tent mode, it alleviates the problem somewhat. But when you're in laptop mode and using the webcam, it's going to be up your nose, not very flattering. But the biggest negative of the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 is its price. It's way overpriced in my opinion, especially when you compare it to some of its competition. The HP Spectre X360 with its KB Lake G processor, which was just released, comes in much less. It has a 4K display, also excellent build quality, really good looks. I'm going to be reviewing that in the next week or two, so stay tuned for that. But getting back to the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1, I definitely think they overpriced this device, but they tend to do that with their XPS line, especially on the higher end models. And I'm not surprised by its price. Take a look at the new Dell XPS 15 that just was released with the Core i9. That's coming in close to $3,000 when it's all said and done. That's for the highest end model. But I'm curious to know what you think about the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1. Overall, I really like it. Battery life could be better. Performance is very good. The fans actually work a lot on this device. They, are, they do kick in. They are working over time. You will hear it. Something to keep in mind. But really, that's about as far as negatives you're going to get. The price and the battery being the chief culprits here. But overall, I think it's a very good device. I think you're going to be happy, especially if you want a 15-inch convertible. This certainly fits the bill. And don't forget to check out our sponsor for today's video, scdkey.com, where you get some massive savings on Windows keys as well as gaming keys. Head on over to scdkey.com for those savings. And I want to thank them for providing a 10% discount for my loyal viewers. Check out the description and link below for more information. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.